And see, that's what, what's so ridiculous. And like this piece right here from the Washington Report on Middle East Affairs, April 2011, piece by Ian Williams. Uh, Gaddafi, no, but BBC. This, here you have Susan Rice, okay? Who's US related ambassador, to who? Uh, related to Condoleezza Rice, okay? U.S. Ambassador in the U.N., Susan Rice, explains uh, to the uh, Security Council of February 18, 2011, that while it was the only member to veto a resolution condemning Israeli settlements as illegal, the U.S. Never, nevertheless considered Israeli settlements uh, illegal, okay? Now, let me you drop, see what I'm saying? Let me drop now, you got, now you got people like that, and, then you got, and I'm throwing Alan West is another person you got to watch out for. Now, this Negro is, was in the military. He was discharged from the military from shooting at, at an Iraqi prisoner's head. He didn't hit the prisoner, but he was discharged. He almost, he almost killed this fellow, okay? The Alan West, the Tea Party Negro, mm -hmm. okay? Okay? The handkerchief head, buck dancing Negro who has been selling out the community uh, and, and is going to do it and, 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 uh, until he and other uh, people of, of his background is dealt with properly. Let me drop this on you. And this will, this will probably sorry, make, I hope this make all us laugh, and maybe the audience, <laughs> okay. when, they, when they get a chance to see this, they'll, they'll laugh at this little piece. But I thought it was interesting that 20 years ago, we identified the fact that uh, there's a movement afoot to, in fact, create a whole new category of black people who come from interracial marriages. If anybody goes back and think, uh, they tried to separate them as if somehow they darker than you and me, Mike, mm -hmm. but somehow they got another distinct uh, classification called interracial, right? Is if somebody they ain't all us interracial? And they said that's the new standard of beauty now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they've been pushing this since the right. middle 80s, okay? Right, right. It's interesting that when you look at Condoleezza, right, and Susan, Susan Rice. both Rices, I call them brown Rices, brown rice. okay? Now, <laughs> it's interesting because 20 nice. years ago, we identified this new racial group right. as brown crackers. We call them wheat thins. So now we got brown rice and brown crackers, right? Yeah. All right. What else we need for a complete meal? Well, you got some soup? I just gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't, chicken. We ain't you got, far from a complete chicken. meal. Come here, on, man. come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I'll bring a bottle of Alize. <laughs> you bring it? Okay. It right. used to be back in the day we we were able to identify Uncle Ben by his behavior. I'm talking about Ben Chavis. That's some of that right. white rice, right? Right. Right. So we done went from the right. Uncle Ben, right, <laughs> to Susan and Condoleezza. I was just oh, watching man. College Man, don't talk about my Aunt Jemima like that. The other night, speaking that, of Uncle Ben. Aunt Jemima's, <laughs> I'll tell you. And yeah. Uncle Tom, uh, Sambles, not Uncle Tom's. But it's just amazing, man, uh, the level of disinformation. I've been monitoring media for over 30 years now, okay, with the aid of people like Brother Randy and Steve Coakley and some others. And we've been able to help other brothers, uh, Brother Marcus, who has his own school, Brother FX, who's down here with you, and, and some other young brothers. And that's our mission, because I know right. now they're going to have young brothers that they're going to, so we're going to keep this thing alive. And it's important that we always have that voice of clear opposition, because Absolutely. America and black people are anathema to each other, unless the black people take on the identification of the white people. And when you have black people who take on the identification of white people, they cease to be a functioning part of the reality of black people. That's Barack Obama, yes. okay? And they That's use right. those people through the Absolutely. media, which is why I don't do media today, okay? I don't talk, and I suggest other black people, when the media comes to stick that microphone in your face, don't Clam say up. nothing. Yeah. Because they're not out here to aid you in moving forward. They're, in fact, out here to uh, maintain the status quo. That's to keep black people in their place, because this is how the media sees us. That's I right. often tell people, if you really want to understand the media, that the middle of the newspaper is something called the op-ed page. That's opinions and editorials. You very rarely will see the names of the people who write the editorials because they sit on the editorial board. Those are the people who decide what direction the newspaper is going. Yes. But if you take op-ed, put them on the end of the press, which is in the middle, which correctly identifies who they are, you get the word oppressed. Mm. And that is the mission of the media, is to keep the vast majority of people in an oppressive position through the editorial of the board, which again dictates what direction the media is going to go. And it ain't just the print media, the visual media has their op-ed as well. Right. Absolutely. And so we got to understand the overall context from which we're trying to do things in this society because it's not pro-liberation or pro-aspirations of the people. It's about control 
yeah. and limiting the people. That's right. He's absolutely, Brother Robert is absolutely correct. And it's about containment. It's about control. And that's the reason why it's important that we get organized and mobilize our people because they're not going to do it. Because as Gil Scott Heron said years ago, you know, the revolution will not be televised. And uh, people need to, you know, check out what he's talking about. Get a CD, get his book. Like, right. like the nigger factory. That's right. Okay. You know, uh, what he talks about, you know, <laughs> get his book, the nigger factory. <laughs> it's a tremendous book by Gil Scott Heron. That brother is, uh, is tremendous. And that's the reason why their brothers and sisters, you know, I'm sure are trying to wait brothers. Yo, I know it's in print. I'll get you copies of it. I got some stuff for you all. Um, there's a lot of information out there that people need to be aware of. And a lot of times people need to read books. See, a lot of times they don't want you to read. They want you to go on the Internet and, and just that's read right. what they want to say. You can, you know, that's, I mean, the Internet is a useful tool, but that's all it is, is a tool. And you shouldn't totally depend on it. You should also read books, magazines, journals, etc. That's, that's right. the reason it's important that people stay focused on what's going on in Libya, but not just in Libya, but all throughout Africa. You know, there's stuff going on That's in right. the, uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. <coughs> there's stuff going on Sudan. in Sierra Leone and the Sudan. Sudan, et cetera, yeah. okay? Which is an Arabic word. Which, you know, uh, Darfur, I'm sorry, Darfur is an Arabic word. That's right. Okay? That, you know, the, uh, the African brothers have been given and, and, um, that um, name. And the reason why they're doing they attack the attacks on Muslims. And, uh, right. There's, the, the attacks on Muslims attacks on Africans. They associate black folks with Muslims. You see, they associated with us, or us with anything negative or, or what they consider negative. That's right. You know, and that's the reason why we have to be uh, have to stay on, on top because what they're trying to do is recolonize Africa. That's right. And they're trying to do the same thing in the Middle East. Was there they're, 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 Right, because you remember in the, in the Foreign Affairs and years ago oh, by Madame Ball. About 20 years right, ago. Right, about 20 it? years ago, back in 1991, that's about right. 92, where this person talked about we better try to recolonize Africa before these black folks, African people over here, wake up. That's right. Okay. And, and then they you also need, about us, and then you, then you need, then you need to get, <laughs> no, then you need to get uh, also check out National Security Council Memorandum Number Forty Six. That's right. National Security Council Memorandum Number Forty Six, which talks about how uh, they were going, and this is, came out in 1977, and I'll get y'all copies of that. National Security Council Memorandum came out 19, uh, in, in 1977, 78. National Security Council Number Forty Six. I said it over and over again because I want y'all to hear this because they had developed. There was a memo that came out. Where they were talking about, and Zbigniew Brzezinski was a part of. He was a U.S. National Security Advisor at that time. Uh, we're talking about how they it was dealt with the U.S. and Black movement. How they going to prevent African brothers and sisters over here, but who going to brothers and sisters in Africa and all over in Brazil, etc. Okay, how are they going to do that? Well, they came with different policies, different strategies, different approaches That's to right. attack us. So they came up with, uh, okay, we're going to attack the, the Black government officials. We're going to come up with a policy called Fumenschen. Fumenschen is a German word That's which right. means primitive man, subhuman beast. See. It, and, and they came up with this policy in order to attack black government officials and stuff like that so that they can neutralize us because they know that basically our people are talking about trying to organize for power. So that's the reason why our people started to look at the electoral arena over less than 40 years ago. And it's okay? no accident, brother, that many of our leaders come out of the foundation oriented leadership Absolutely. mode where they're that's being right. fighting because this is where Barack that's Obama right. came Absolutely from. Absolutely right. Okay? That's right. It's important for people to understand. And his, his mother. That's right. You can go to the NAACP, foundation control. Urban League, foundation control. He's that's right. why none of the problems ever get taken care of because right. these people are primarily being funded to push a particular social policy. Yeah, it, again, you got to associate that with the non-governmental organizations sure. or NGOs right. in Haiti right. who are doing yeah. exactly the same thing Absolutely. in Jamaica who and are doing exactly and, the same thing in Zimbabwe. That's because right. Because it's the NGO, the movement for, for democratic change, that's the NGO. That's right. That's a nope. national government organization. They're over here attacking Robert Rob Mugabe, but they need to read Gerald Horn's book from the barrel of a gun, which talks about Zimbabwe and what actually is going on. And the point okay? is, no matter where you look, you'll find that, and I'm going to give people Several articles. I'm just going to cite the names so people can go get them for themselves. And Brother Mike, when he gets a chance, I know if he looks at these articles, he's going to do another program on this stuff. Right. Uh, two articles having to do with foundations. One is, is your favorite found uh, favorite charity infiltrated? OK, this is from uh, morecity.com for March 8, 2011. And another one is uh, Foundation of Evil. It deals with how the foundations are pushing social policy, okay? Barack Obama comes out of Ford Foundation. His mama comes out of Ford Foundation, okay? Ford Foundation and CIA are like this. Absolutely. Just like the Agency for International Development 
and then they work together. They that's right. His mother was working for a group that I think it was almost like the agency. That's right. The agency for international development. That's right. The CIA type. That's where Michael Townsley came from. That's the guy right. who made the bomb, created the bomb, and planted it in and uh, Orlando Letier's a car that blew up. You read the book uh, Death in Washington by Donald Free and Fred Landis, where it talks about Michael Townsley, who came from the Peace Corps. That's right. Okay? And came from this group, Peace Corps, CIA, like that. Peace Corps, CIA. There are people in the CIA. And not all Peace Corps members are members of the CIA, but there are people who had went to the, uh, was trained at the Peace Corps, and then was, uh, uh, was, was recruited by the CIA, and then also was trained by DINA, the Chilean Secret Police. That's right. Uh, the other uh, three or four articles here, the National Front for the Salvation of Libya, the group in Libya that's supposed to comprise the rebels, okay? Uh, this is from uh, immuni.org. Uh, it deals with the, national, the history of the National Foundation for the uh, Salvation of Libya, okay? The National Endowment for Democracy, excellent, excellent article from March the 10th, 2011, the LA Times, or you can go to truefrequencynews.com Clinton wants to recognize National Endowment for Democracy funded FNSL, which is what the uh, uh, Foundation for the National Salvation of Libya, uh, the same rebels as a legit government. Again, all that's coming from the National Endowment for Democracy and Hillary Clinton. Here's another one. So people can see we're not just talking here. Right. This is the research. CIA, Black Ops, Libya, Egypt, Yemen, Western Imperial, oil banking, bombing empire, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, mm. right? You see, uh, that's right. This is from the Gentle Awakening, the gentleawakening.ning.com deals all with the National Endowment for Democracy and their relationship uh, to another group uh, that goes all the way back uh, to uh, Roosevelt's wife. Right. What was her name? Eleanor. Eleanor, Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh. Freedom House. On the board of Freedom House is Andrew Young. In the article, they point out that they call Andy Young a CIA insider. And he was a trial analyst. Okay? A CIA insider. And Dr. Like, King said something about him. Right. He was talking about, uh, he so, called him Uncle, Uncle, call him Uncle Tom. We so he was never, the whitest Negro you ever seen or something like that? We yes. never identified the spies to any degree. They're dribbling out now, but we never identified those outside of Jesse, and now we know the cameraman. But we know, we know others, but... We need conclusive evidence. So when I see stuff like this, talking about this guy, I, I know that it's real. Here's another article. You, All right. He's telling me I got one minute left. All right. I want to thank you, brothers. Say the name of the article. Uh, this is from Philip Giraldi. Uncle Ned, National Endowment for Democracy, comes to call it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Brother Robert X, anytime. Brother Randy anytime, Evans. Anytime, anytime. Listen. I hope you all wrote all this stuff down. If you didn't, we're going to try to do a follow-up show on this because there's a whole lot of information, oh, a lot of yes. things you need to need, you need to know. Definitely. Don't let them just give you that fake news on 2579, 11, That's right. and all that. <laughs> <laughs> do some research and learn what's going on in the world. That's, That's right. Because right. they, they pulled the wool over your eyes and they sticking right. something, you know, giving you a prostate exam and everything. As Lawrence Fishburne said in uh, the movie School Days, wake up! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.